Okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, cool. So, on, so we're in on, on your so we're in on your so I've got a, I've got a, I've got an echo. Do that echo. Are you getting an echo? Are you getting an echo? Um, no. Do you have a headphones? Do you have a headphones? Um, I don't have any handy. No. Let me turn the volume okay. down, maybe. Okay. Let's. Okay. Try to Let's maybe like turn your maybe, volume like, down. Turn your maybe, volume down, maybe. I think it's coming from your it's side. From your side. Not sure. Not sure. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit better. Let's see. Let's see. No, I'm still hearing no, I'm still myself. I'm still hearing let's myself. See if, uh, let's, see if, uh, let's see if I can let's work see if I can work. So, yeah, as far as where we are, um, you've seen the yeah you've seen the the TED talk kind of what we do, but right now what we're trying to do is crack the the continuity of open source project development product development which. We nailed, like, we can build things fast. We can build a tractor in a day. We can build a house, like, uh, in this house that I'm in right now, CD Go Home, we built that in five days with 50 people, modular design, open source. So modularity is the key to that. We're trying to figure that out for development, and this initiative on <clears throat> the Steam Camps is to build a team, also f uh, create a funding mechanism where we bring a bunch of good players together to provide the best curriculum, and we can get paid for that. And it only takes so much of our time, but not still, if it's nine days, that's still a bit of time. But during each of the events, we're actually developing real products. I mean, it sounds like simple curriculum, but if you look at the details of that, uh, there's some high, high power. Oh, someone else join us? Uh, who joined us there? Looks like somebody else. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, who joined us then? Sorry, who joined us then? Okay, Jason. I'm waiting, I'm waiting a minute. Sorry, who is that? Sorry, who is that? Sorry, who is that? Not sure. Not sure. I'm good. I'm good. Can you still hear me well? Can, can you still hear? Yeah. Okay. So we're so trying to, trying to develop the, nail the development, development part and getting that and getting that funded. So during every steam camp, we we actually developed actually developed for the real technology. So every steam camp build a product, a new product like a drone, vacuum, vacuum. vacuum, vacuum. I do. Or yeah. Or, or, or Raspberry Pi tablet, or other kind of really just first three start. But the idea is to take those further to the real products. So during the events, we're actually doing real development work while teaching very basic skills in the fully open source toolkit. So that's the goal while we paid for it. And um, trying to assemble we're actually trying to assemble right a, 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 a team right now to make them happen. Now. That's who I am. So maybe you can give them feedback on where you think you could, uh, you and think you could fit in this, or how oh, this, this may be important to you. Uh, well, by, uh, by hobby, I'm an electrical engineer, so I can bring uh, all the engineering, the electrical part of it. I can bring the programming part of it, plus um, Raspberry Pis are, are my uh, SPC of, of choice, so I'm familiar with, with all the Raspberry Pi stuff. I put together a hat, you know, with the, you know, all the, all the attachments and, and everything. So I'm, I'm familiar with pretty much all of that stuff. I'm looking to do it professionally as well, so so that's that's I guess that's a just a I can pull part of it where I am. <laughs> and in terms and of, of the the of of on top of what on top of what you're doing right now, you're doing all the time. Sorry, 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 sorry
You're a police officer? You're a police officer? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd like to, and you'd like to, you'd like to transition over like to the area. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So okay. Do you think this is an opportunity to make a leap and work out on that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm looking for anything that can help me out. Yeah. Especially yeah. If you want something that that's a uh, you know a public good like that. Yeah. 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 Um, um, what's your level of commitment to that's something you require or not? No. That's all open source. That's all open source. You got the, the label from Oshawa. How does that play a role in your life? Uh, well, I actually had to make it closed source because my uh, main competitor is uh, harassing me. So I don't have money for a lawyer. It seemed easier for the time being to, to make it closed source to get the pressure off a little bit. Um, but it was, it was until a little while ago, open source. But I did have plans. I, I mean, I did intend to keep it open source. Um, but then I started getting, getting hassled by Atlas Scientific, the, uh, I guess you'd say the main competitors. Okay. And I, yeah, I thought okay. Okay. I should do that to keep them from coming after me so much. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying so you got Wait, the, so you're saying the, you got the, the Oshawa certification? You had to close it up recently. But then you had to close it up recently. Yes, I see. I see. <laughs> Let's see. But I didn't Let's see. Having it be open source. I did like the fact that you, the majority of my customers are are uh, outside of the United States where water is, is more of an issue. And people were taking my designs and building them on their own, which, which I thought was, was great. I see. I see. Hold on a second. So I'm seeing. So I'm seeing. This here. Jason, so are you? Jason, so are you? Because I'm seeing Jason. Jason, are you on the call right now? I, I am, but I'm. Uh, I think it's when you speak, Marcin, that I don't hear much but noise, or at least I hear a huge echo when, um, whenever you speak. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, uh, Jason. Um, however. Uh, yeah, I actually didn't know we were going to talk at, at this time. Are you available okay. in, in one hour? or Because I actually scheduled yes. this call since I haven't heard a response from you on the, uh, on the okay. email. No, I, okay. Are yeah, you available the in an hour? Didn't go, yeah, I guess the meeting invite didn't go through clearly. So, yes, yeah, so one hour is fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 12, so noontime. That would be great. Thanks. So I'll, okay. I'll just see you right here. Thanks, bye. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry for the confusion. Um, okay, sorry, Justin. Um, let's see. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Actually, because I, I muted you and I, I can't seem to unmute you. I can't hear you right now. Can you maybe like, let me just maybe refresh here. Okay. Yeah, that's that's better. Um, wait, but you're still muted. <laughs> Can you maybe like like ref like reset? Just basically refresh your on your browser. You should be able to get right back if you refresh. Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, okay. How do you feel um, the so so regarding the, 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 the curriculum? How how much have the you curriculum? How how much have you looked at you? Look at the 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 four days, the four days. Um, I I skimmed over. It's nine days, right? Yeah, nine days total. Yeah, nine days total. Yeah, I didn't look at the things that uh, I, I didn't really feel. I had much of a part in like the three D printing and and that sort of thing. Cause I I don't know what I'm first thing about. 3D printing, but I did look to see the the electrical engineering, the the hardware side of it, the Raspberry Pi side of it. That was stuff that that I did 
I did have a look at because I knew that that would be something that I had a lot of knowledge in. Okay. Okay. If we talk about a welder by taking a bunch of taking a bunch of do you know any do you know any about power electronics basically using any about power controller the unit controller and basically using some controller and some power element like IGBT to control the DC basically power basic for example to control the welder controller to control the welder controller yeah could do that could do that because maybe that's that would be something that because maybe that's that would be something that we we're trying to align people to this good task because we're planning on building 650 battery packs, which are going to be relevant, for example, for, like, be relevant for example, for like a third year later on. But as an experiment, we're just getting the hang of the current implementation. The current implementation it's actually for the welder. Cause it's actually for the welder, because in the first four days, we're planning on, and the next exercise to show people, hey, here we have the universal controller that we're going to use on the computer, and we have a little uh, page for, for power control, power control the little IGBT stage, stage the and then we're just controlling it with our email, like with modulation, modulation, and then a very simple simple controller, just as a point that can show people that, hey, you can do this with these very simple things, and we can have some sparks flying, and it'll be pretty impressive, I, I think. Um, also, what do you, what do you think, have you ever had any experience with like circuit, like circuit, like circuit making, like, circuit plotting? You mean, like, like designing a, a PCB, a board? Well, one side well, of the one side the design, the other side of I'm, I'm assuming that I'm assuming that the the IOP is the problem that the design. But as far as the, the, as far as the fabrication of it, have you ever had a circuit? circuit? I have. Um, it's difficult to to get a a small detailed design etched. Right. Um, right. Not, yeah, not, I have. We. We are in a program where we are making an Arduino in using one of the, the big chip, not the tiny one, point one, but the, the point one, the thing where, 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 where we could, uh, I'm hoping that we, I'm hoping that we get all the program, program we have to actually make, make that's doable, that's doable. That's doable. That's doable. That process, but using a simple plotter, yeah. so, a, so a blocking pen on a process, a using a simple so not on a board, it's a copy board, Blocking marker. Have you seen that link? Um, have you seen that link that I um, No, I didn't see that link, but I, I'm familiar with that process. Um, the way that I've done it in the past was with uh, photo negatives or with, um, but yeah, mostly just photo negative paper transfer, like a printer transfer. Yeah. Where you expose it to UV light, yeah. and that's what leaves the mask, and then you edge what what's uh, what's left. That'd be very easy to to do, like a an Arduino Uno with the through the through hole components. That'd be that'd be very doable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's, that's that's something we could. That's something we could do. Maybe we'll develop some programs to do things like that. So you've seen the universal I've seen the universal I've seen the link. I've seen the link. Start work on the universal axis. You've seen universal axis. Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Let me send you a link here. Let me send you a link here. Can, can you open up? The, can, can you open up? The, are you on a cell phone? Uh, yeah, it is. You want to have a computer? You want to have a computer? Still getting a bad echo there. Um, I do. You want me to try it back on the computer? Yeah, if, if you can do yeah, that. Yeah, if you can do that, it'll be easier for us now. Just give me a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. Okay, yeah, that's that's actually uh, sound quality is good. Can you click on the on the left side there? Uh, see the message. Bottom left should be. Okay. okay, so 3D printing type type related thing. Yeah, and onto that, the idea there is for the Steam Camp, we're making that as the basis for a super simple 3D printer. So, uh, D3D simple. So, so using like a, like a servo motor or a stepper motor or something like that? Yeah, stepper motors, which is already included on an axis. Uh, so okay. if you click on this link here, so that's a implementation of just using three of these axes for a simple 3D printer. We did that in Spain. Um, but the idea is there is, so we're using this triple axis simple thing. And then you can put on the plotter onto it or the electric motor onto that to make a simple mill. And of course the first iteration of the electric motor, it might be crappy, but every time we're going to run these events, we're going to improve things and get, you know, constantly recruit people. Uh, by the way, do you have any experience with uh, making any electric motors or anything? Because we're looking at this axial flux electric motor. Making motors? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I do know about using them. Yeah. <laughs> Step your motors and just your plain old electrical motor, but making yeah. them, no. Yeah. So there's there's ways to do that pretty effectively. Uh, let, me, let me show you, actually. Um... the curriculum take a look at this is a thing for the kind of a simple motor that you can make yourself right now that actually lends itself pretty decently well to 3d printing if you take a look at that uh, click on that link and go to the bottom like he actually shows this thing actually working Look at the mm -hmm. video at the very bottom. I mean, this thing is 500 watts, fast and furious. So, um, <laughs> but you can 3D print a lot of this stuff, and if you do that, do this right, you can have a pretty highly efficient brushless motor. That's a brushless motor there. Uh, so mm. that's the kind of thing that that's on day three. That's the electric motor. So scale that down a little bit because that's that there 500 watts is a little too big. So we would do the smaller version like. 100 watts or 50 watts just a tinier i'm i'm yeah i'm assuming that's just, that's some copper coils it's neodymium magnets and copper coils in a pancake orientation okay. so super simple the controller mm -hmm. there is a couple of mosfets or igbt's and it's got a little sensor to detect the location of the rotor so it triggers that with an arduino uh, I can s control the speed. Once again, this is the territory of simple Arduino speed controller. Uh, in that example there, he's got a yeah, he's got a little knob where he's um, he's not even using an Arduino. He's using something else. He's just doing this without microcontroller logic. He's using a 555 chip to uh, to do the timing to to get the speed control. But yeah, our simple Arduino um, does the trick. So. Yeah, so in an event, you'd be responsible. Let's see, can you hear me there? Let me know when... Justin? Justin, can you hear me? Let me know when you can hear me. OK. 
can you hear me there? Let me know when you can hear me. Can you hear me? Justin, can you hear me? Can you hear me?
Yeah, Justin. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I had a few more questions. Yes, yeah, so we were talking about the motor. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask. So, what should what should take on open source? So, so you you closed up your project for comp. So the idea was what they was, uh, someone else was ripping up your product or what was happening? Uh, well, they thought that I was ripping theirs off and they were threatening patent lawsuits and all kinds of other stuff. Now, the reality was I completely designed my everything that you see on that, that website from scratch and, and from open source technology. <laughs> yeah. at, at, and I intended to keep it that way, but no business will, will touch you if you've got any kind of issues going on. You, you know what I mean? Like no well, how does, to, let me ask you this. So uh, were you so basically you you said yes I'm gonna comply no how how did how did closing it resolve the issue though? Well, it made it seem a little bit less. Uh, it, it took a little bit of the liability away for someone to buy something from me, knowing that they weren't they weren't uh, gonna be involving you know like getting involved in some sort of patent issues. Uh huh. But how? Do, so if it's if it's closed, then it's kind of up in the air, and they don't know anything, uh, you know, about it one way or another. If it's open, then the other company had that much more of a reason to to come after me to keep people from basically getting something that does exactly what they sell for free. Oh, so so. So did you resp who was it? American Scientific? Who? Atlas. Atlas, Atlas Scientific. Atlas Scientific. So you, you responded to them and you told them what? I essentially just ignored them. Um, they only ever sent me one letter. It, it wasn't a legal letter. It wasn't a lawyer letter. It, it just was from the CEO threatening all of that. And um, was and I just and didn't letter? What's that? It was a cease and desist letter. Yeah, it was sort of a it was it was sort of a prior to cease and desist letter, but yeah, it was. Uh, so what what did they ask you? They said close that up or what? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Can you say that again? And they wanted me to close my business completely, just to completely just disappear and go away. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you ignored them, <laughs> and, and have they contacted you since? No, they haven't. What, how long ago was this? Uh, a couple months ago, a few months ago. Huh. So did you take down your stuff from your website, like all the plans and stuff? 
Um, yes. Yeah. Huh. But you still kept the same website, like uh, the sales site, or you changed yeah, that? Yeah. 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 Everything's there still. Hmm. Are you expecting them to come back? Come back? I am eventually. Um, they just haven't yet. I assume that their claim, I think, is is baseless. But but like I was saying, I'm not a lawyer, so and I don't. If I can avoid getting wrapped up in patent litigation, I will. And I figured that that would be one way to take a little bit of the pressure off. Hmm. And otherwise, how come? Uh, why did you insist on that being open source in the in the first place? Well, because of the way that that I created it was was from people publishing the ways that they were doing it. Um, my original reason for being was trying to to have a hydroponic like garden, and I realized that you need all these ways to measure things in the water, which are not um, cheap or necessarily uh, simple or easy. Um, I was able to to make these things, and then it turned out that there was a, a decent market for it. So I started manufacturing and selling them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At a fraction of the competitors' cost. Yes. Yeah. What are uh, what are your numbers? I saw you you did the what is it uh, dissolved? Was it um, one probe? Was what like pH for twenty bucks? The the probe itself twenty yeah. Uh huh. And how much is it normally? Uh, through Atlas, uh, it's a hundred and something. Mhm. Mm and all all they're doing is just reselling the same same imported Chinese manufactured probe. Mm. There's nothing. Yeah, they're not doing any sort of value added process or, or anything other than putting their name on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Did, did you, um, did they allude to anything that they're... Wait, so did, do you think they contracted the Chinese guys to design that probe for them or no? Well, the probe itself is is sort of a commodity item. Oh, okay. the the hardware The hardware to read it, um, they 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 designed. I I'm sure. And what I mean, what claim did they have? I mean, a hardware to to read a probe. What's the big deal? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I I did write a response letter, but I just decided it would be best to to not send it. And I did mention that is like. PH probe has been around for a uh, hundred years by now, and there's it, there's only so many ways to read it. I mean, do and they have almost all? Do they have patents? Almost on? all of them. Go ahead. Uh, they yeah they have they hold two patents. They hold a patent to read the the PH probe basically, and a patent to read the the, the conductivity probe. So I've done a little bit of research in patents since all of this has started. And apparently this is pretty common to, to change one little thing and it's different, so it's patentable. Mm. Uh, even though the change is, is minimal, pointless, and obvious, which shouldn't really be patentable at this point. I mean, almost every aspect of it is public and, and open source. Yeah. But, but because they're dragging it in that direction and threatening to drag everybody else in that direction, that's where everybody has to go. Yeah. No, that's interesting, because <laughs> from our perspective, we would love that kind of shit. I mean, th that would be publicity. <clears throat> yeah, I did I did consider posting their, their letter. It, it's an extraordinarily rude letter for a, a company that claims to be making millions of dollars in sales and having yeah. government contracts and things like that. <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> but my but my de my decision thus far has just have been to ignore them and to wait until they do something that I actually have to respond to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. 
No, that's interesting. And after looking at the patents, you saw it's like, duh, that's obvious. Is that what you thought, or? Yeah, yeah. Their their conductivity one. I'll I'll agree that they have come up with a way to measure it. But I mean, I can tell you a dozen ways off the top of my head right now of ways to measure it. There's pros and cons to all of them, and all of them are obvious to to anybody with a you know a, a medium amount of electrical knowledge. There's only so many ways you can do it. And they picked out one way and developed the product from it. Uh huh. And the way you did it was different. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And just well, because I mean, the end result yeah. is the same doesn't doesn't mean that I'm I'm infringing on their patents. But of course, they thought it'd be an easy an easy uh, threat to make. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, this sounds like clearly you wouldn't you wouldn't lose. And I don't know if you've thought about it, but definitely like. Um, that be like if it ever comes up to it. I mean, definitely contact Ashwa, and I mean they have lawyers on their board. They can probably help you for free or something like that. Um, have you considered that or? Uh, no, I didn't even consider them as being a a source. Um, I did spend a good amount of time looking around for for legal help. Oh man, dude, um, and um, there's not. Well, I can tell you right now, <laughs> one of the their board members. I don't know if he's still on the board, but they. They have at least one like IP lawyer, and that's so. Oh yeah, well that would be perfect. <laughs> no, dude, you sh like if this comes up to it, just go public. You you'll completely win. I mean, as long as you can afford it. Like say you know you got a job. You're a, if you're a policeman, I don't know if you've got a lot of pressure, but um, you it's like man, you'd win this thing. I clearly. Um, well, that was the other thing is is uh, you know the police departments don't look kindly on anybody making any waves <laughs> right, you know, right. So you got that, that on you and that's kind of like you're depending on that right now for your livelihood right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. otherwise um i mean if we're doing open source completely open source product development uh, are you fine with that do you have any? yeah yeah mm -hmm. no I, I don't have any i don't have any qualms with that at all yeah which part of the were there so so i'm hearing that this could be a way to to make a living in open source, um, is the open source part like, is that attractive to you? Like, as far as our vision of technology that matters, or how do you, what all is interesting to you in the OSE open source ecology package? I, the thing that caught my attention the most was the the machines, the the fifty machines, like the tractor and the bulldozer. Um, it it really does make a lot of sense. There doesn't really need to be a whole lot of variance you, you, you know pick a pick a design that works and make it, it as simple as simple effective and, and easy to build as possible and anybody could have one yeah you know we build those in a day yeah <laughs> that's impressive yeah i mean that's what we're doing that's um uh, there's and once again like i'm trying to start a business like basically since about two years i've been full-time on the enterprise aspect of it because for the last decade it was essentially all prototyping but i recognize that you know it's kind of funny and i don't know what your feedback on this is but it's like we've got products that people could take and run with in terms of enterprise but nobody has and i still don't really understand why i mean it's like out of this whole world nobody sees the potential in it enough or there's not enough entrepreneurs to to actually run with it uh, and I, I do see that the all the entrepreneurs they kind of go to more flashy things than this kind of stuff and I actually find that to me the biggest block is those entrepreneurs that could make it happen they're like they're pretty much scared because they don't believe in open source so there's a there's a huge cultural barrier there like really no entrepreneur has touched this thing you know and it's like dude this is trillions of dollars of economics here we're developing uh, but that was I, I was blown away by that because you know we had the brick press since like 2008 and nobody even touched it for a business like you know trying to produce it or anything like that um, what do you think of that why do you think that is well I, I've got a couple contacts sort of within my my industry here and 
everybody that he knows as well, all of their best interests, uh, best customers, they're all outside of the United States. And I've got one, um, he's from, he's from Kenya. And he was telling me that he just thinks that Americans, the, there's the whole system of, of brands and liability uh, that strips away from practicality. Liability and whereas, what? And, 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 and uh, practicality. They'll, they'll choose maybe if we were talking about a tractor, they'll, they'll choose a John Deere tractor or, or whatever because that's what they know. And because their business plan, their their banks aren't going to to bankroll kind of a DIY tractor yeah. if it's if it's fundamental to the business, they're going to go with something that has some proven <laughs> values and track record. And, and it's the same thing in my in my industry as well. Is people are going to go with the bigger names, even though they're not the better value, because they don't want to gamble. Or they don't want to spend the yeah. money. But in another country that's not quite as developed or, or with that mindset or culture, they're much more willing to take a DIY approach if it's that or nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear it. And if, the surprising thing for me, there's a, a thing such as an entrepreneur that still exists in America, and those people don't care about these things, but still, not, n not a single soul has kind of been attracted to it. And I would say it's primarily because they're like, okay, now if I'm going to go into business, they just don't see the case for an open source business. So that part, I think, probably pushes them away because they just don't get it, you know. So, But anyway, we're going to change all of this. I mean, we've got some... Uh, by the way, next year we're planning on a $250,000 incentive challenge to, to produce the world's first open source 3D printed cordless drill, professional grade, from trash so part of it is the recycling infrastructure but we're going to put that as an incentive challenge on hero x and we want to show the first ever example that open source product development works and it works better than in industry standards so i mean we're going to change all of this uh it's coming in a few years but right now we're in this still in the stage but part of the reason why i want to do the steam camps is that we generate a population of of development capable people that can participate in the contests and actually the developers like yourself, uh, instructors, would continue the ongoing product development as a, you know, as a team, as a bunch of co collaborators. So that's the... And another, another issue uh, with, with the hardware is all of the certifications and the safety regulations that you need to comply with. Uh, that's pretty burdensome. Yeah. When, yeah. when it comes to open, open source, let's say you wanted to make an open source anything that plugs into the wall. You know, you're gonna have to get the UL and CE uh -huh. and uh, yeah. whatever yeah, sure. Japan has. Yeah, and none yeah, yeah. of that's cheap, cheap or easy. And you make a small change, and you got to do it all over again. Yeah, no, that's true. But once again, we crowdsource that. It's probably within the. So we're doing a. Ever hear of Hero X? No. It's an offshoot of the X Prize. You know the X Prize, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's an offshoot of that. It's for crowdsourced projects, crowd design. But we'll we'll just put that in a budget. We'll put that okay. UL CE certification that that's part of the development budget for that incentive challenge. So when we get that funded, you know, say we do a 250k prize, we might add another 250k for legal and enterprise and all of that, uh, and then mm -hmm. we'll raise from companies. So I, I think we won't have a problem raising that. I think I've got some good contacts on that. Um, cool. So. Uh, so open source and super cooperators is really important to us. How would you rate yourself on, on your scale? Like how much you believe in the open source culture from from one to ten? Well, I'm pretty much self-taught when it comes to all of this stuff, and you know, just about everything that I've learned is open source. So I don't I don't have a professional background. I, I don't have any really closed-minded, like a closed closed source you know, like mentality. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I put myself, I guess, at a 10 because I really have no interest in, in, in otherwise. Yeah, yeah. How'd you find out about the Oshawa certification? Uh, I, I stumbled onto it somehow. Um, 
I've got one of the earlier numbers. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How would you rate yourself? Like, so we're we're here working as a team. We're gonna like, if you generate your curriculum, I'm gonna learn it. How do you think? Um, can you teach us? Can you teach the rest? Are you good at documenting and that kind of stuff? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I always considered documentation the second half of of development. If you can't make something that somebody else, without n knowing the intimate details, use it, you know, that's that's worthless. Right. No, that's right. Yeah. And as far as cooperating with a bunch of people from, like, so we're looking at doing, like, 12 events at the same time. Um, and that means we work together on the curriculum and all that and have a couple of meetings where we teach each other stuff like that. How would you rate yourself of a, as a cooperator? Do you, do you kind of see a gap in how people cooperate or what's your, what's your take on, um, super, like, how would you rate yourself as a cooperator? Yeah, well, I was, before I was a police officer, I was in the army, so sort of been, and some part of teamwork most of my adult working life. Yeah, um, but I, I'm content to to fill whatever job is is required at the moment. If I've got no issues with working as a team or yeah. filling out tasks or maybe assigning tasks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you? You don't have a, like access to. You don't do any like three D printing stuff. You don't have a three D printer, or have you haven't worked with? One? I don't know. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we could get you because the see the plotter would require that you'd have the ability to prototype the simple axis. The axis costs like twenty five dollars uh, an axis, but um, if you don't have a three D printer, you, you're not in any hackerspace or anything like that. I think I think I've got a a library that that has a three D printer, but. It's like like I said, it's it's nothing that that I've ever even become passing familiar with. So I I wouldn't even know the first thing. Yeah. Um, now for the Steam Camp, you have to learn learn about that. Are you willing to learn all about it? I mean, it's basic. Well, it's, it's been on it's been on my bucket list. So yeah, it's not something that I don't want to learn. It's something that I do. It's just nothing that I've gotten around to yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe uh, maybe we can allocate the task of the the power controller. So 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 here's the situation. Assume you have a 200, 24 volt, 200 amp power source, um, up to 300 amp max. Can you do an Arduino controller for that? Design that. I'd um, have to look around and 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 see what what methods are are there. How much, um, so you said you studied electrical engineering in college, college level? Um, it's all, it's all been self-taught. Uh-huh. Did you go to college? Did you study anything or? I, not for that, but yeah, I did. What did you study? Uh, actually I actually have a good degree in the Korean language. <laughs> Korean language. Is that something you did yep. for, for the military or translation? It, it is, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh wow, interesting. Yeah, um, how much did you run into like issues of power electronics controlling things with micro power elements with microcontrollers? Uh, any of that, or you'd have to look not up? a whole lot. No, yeah, it it would be something that I would have to to look up, okay. look into. Okay, and and your skill set is though like, well, as far as the the electrical stuff, what, what software do you use? Do you use KiCad? Um, yeah, I'm familiar with that. It's not the one that I mainly use, but but yeah, I I know it. Okay, which one do you use? I use a an online one called Upverter. Oh, Upverter. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Huh. I I just find that it's a an easier interface, and it gives you the it gives you more footprints and and symbols and all the chips and, and things like that that you might need without having to fool around with trying to get it into into, into KiCad. Huh. 
you can find them, but it's more messy a process to get those footprints. Yeah, in the kite yeah, bed. yeah. How, how does that process work? I mean, I haven't, I've used KiCad, but I haven't done so much in it. How, how do you actually get a footprint in there if it's, so say it's not in the original library, where do you do? You just download it different places? Do they have like a central repository or? They, they have a GitHub yeah. with a good bit, but let's say it's not in there, you just have to poke around the internet and see if you can find it. Uh, maybe the, maybe the chip manufacturer published one. Maybe you're lucky and it'll be in the right format. If it's not, you'll you have to make it on your own. Hmm. Do they have active development on getting more footprints into KiCad, or it's kind of like wild? It's it's sort of in the wild. Um, it, it it's inconvenient. It's hmm. just the whole process is inconvenient, and you have to associate symbols to footprints and. You know, all, all of that stuff. It's, it's, it's just easier in other, in other yeah. software packages. Uh, unfortunately, we can't, we can't do it because uh, the Upverter thing, since that, that in itself is an open source, even though it's free, but we, right. we need that yeah. level of control. Because um, also mm -hmm. another thing about KiCad is you have direct, I don't know if you know <clears> this, but you have direct import into FreeCAD. Mm-hmm. You ever use FreeCAD? Uh, I have it downloaded, but but yeah, how to use it? No, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we can teach you that. That's shouldn't be an issue. Um, but yeah, but for the Steam Camp, you'd have to get versed in this. So I mean, like FreeCAD and all of that, like the basics. I mean, the kind of stuff that is entry level. But you have to le know it enough that uh, you can guide people through it. The idea, it's more like you have to have a diverse knowledge base, like how all the tools, it's more about tool ecologies than like getting super deep into one tool. It's more about process. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Are you comfortable learning that, that style? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So, okay. So let's see if we can get you to, because uh, I mean, basically we're like all the stuff you see in the curriculum, there's... Actually, let me, let me show you one more thing here. Um, on the curriculum page, there's the, did you see the, the graphic, which shows like the different machines and how they fit to one another? Yeah. Okay, on the third page of that same document, there's a breakdown, a very granular breakdown of all the little details, little items that we need to develop for the camp. And I'm gonna put your name by the, um, the power controller for the welder. Um, so if you can get it doing that, basically it's like, it's kind of like almost a self-selecting process. We're going to, like for the next two weeks, I'm, I'm still recruiting people, but after that, we're going to call a meeting and we're going to call for, okay, um, let's divvy up these tasks and, and develop the curriculum for that. And all of us, like 12, it's, might be more than 12 people it might be up to 24 people or so uh, but we all take up a, a little part of the curriculum and write it that write it up do the actual design test it because we we all have to present it and it's all gotta have to work because we're into producing a good product um, right can you do that can you uh, start on a design for a welder controller using ramps you, do you know ramps by the way uh, no. Okay, so you'd have to take a look. I'll, I'll send you some info, but uh, the universal controller that we currently use for the 3D printers got a RepRap Me Arduino Mega. It's got a Mega, mm -hmm. Arduino Mega on it. You've worked with Arduinos? Yeah. All over, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah very much, yeah. Yeah, so we have to make that control, we have to design a little power stage. So instead of using, like right now on a control panel, we've got a solid state relay. But for this, this we'll probably need a couple of IGBTs or MOSFETs uh, on a little power mm -hmm. board. So probably with, it will probably require, if we're talking about 200 amps, yes, you'll need a heat sink, uh, definitely. Uh, but basically to design that, and then we can take a look at it, prototype it, and see if you can basically control the, it's, it's going to be just pulse width modulated control. So, so by the duty cycle, you're going to take the 24 volts, and with a knob that's already on the, LCD screen that we have on a controller, just turn it, 
Um, so you've, I assume you've done code on Arduino, by all means, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so we have to write the code so that with the knob we're controlling that welder to uh, power on it. So that means you're controlling the voltage, which will control the current. So just basically voltage controller for switching 24 volts at 200 amps continuous. So... It's going to be some thick cables. Yeah, yeah, so that's right. Um, and what we're planning on doing in the actual workshop is do a battery pack that will probably look like, sin since we want to do a cordless tool set, right, eventually, we're probably going to 3D print a, a case that's pretty much a battery form factor. And what we'll do is, mm -hmm. say there's 12 people in the workshop, we simply plug 12 of these batteries into each other because they're stackable. So we're going to do that. Okay. And by and then get the leads out of that for your power source, and that's your, like those battery packs can put out uh, between ten, ten and thirty amps max. So times that twelve. So between like one hundred twenty and three sixty amps. Uh, mm -hmm. They're supposedly rated for, like those Panasonic eighteen six fifties. They're supposedly rated for 30 amps. So, so in principle, that power supply of 12 battery packs is doable for like five minutes of 360 amps, at least five minutes, which is crazy power. So, um, <laughs> but we have to control that. So, um, so we've got we just basically put electrodes on it. The simplest is stick. Have you done welding? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so we put some electrodes on that, and you, you, we're controlling the power, so you just get, like, regular off-the-shelf eighth-inch welding rods, and we'll weld with that. So that's, that'll be the day, day four of the, of the camp, just to show that how powerful uh, the, these simple techniques can be, basically power elements, microcontrollers, and so forth. Yeah, so I'll leave you at that, and I'll follow up with email, and i got to catch this next call, but you think you can do that? Yeah, yeah, let me, let me, uh, let me do a little bit of reading. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk through email. Send uh, first update yourself on all the prior art that we know of for like these cord cordless welders, like all this stuff. It's at the bottom of the curriculum page, so study that. And the document in there with the graphic, like the diagram. Look on page four. That's a complete breakdown. We're gonna start attaching names to that. We'll add yours to the welder part. Okay. Excellent. Well, that sounds like a sounds like a plan. Okay, Justin. Well, thanks. Thanks for talking. We'll we'll continue on email. All right. We'll, we'll have a good day. We'll, probably like uh, we're saying the kickoff meeting in about three weeks or so. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Bye.